Good evening everyone and welcome to my channel. This is Christina to Intuitive Sense and My Two Cents. Tonight I'm going to do a short follow-up to my previous uh, videos, an intuitive reading on the um, tragic death of Liam Payne, the One Direction or former One Direction singer. I have questions. I'm a little confused, but not really because I know that that's what they do. They, they confuse you in the media. Um, when there has been a um, contrived or an orchestrated event, um, then they only put out information that uh, they want the public to know. This is a story that many of us know and understand, and there's other people who don't because they just blindly believe what the media tells them. But when you start to look deeper, uh, you will see things, you will see uh, discrepancies, you will have questions, and then you'll start to see some threads to some other things. So I've just taken a small dive, deep dive into a couple of things, and just want to put out some questions, because maybe there's other people out there who can um, you know, tap in or give some information. I don't know. Uh, here in, as I mentioned, the Latin countries, they are a little bit more, um, free with their, <laughs> or open with their sharing of what actually happened, but they also have their levels of secrecy. It depends on what it is. So, I came across a couple little things that you may have not seen, you know, in the States or, you know, elsewhere. Um, and for me, they're questions. Some other people, it might mean nothing. But for me, it does because it is much more on a metaphysical or esoteric level or an occult level. Um, because when I start to see little things, besides my own intuitive sense that right away, when I start to hear these things that happen out there with public people where there's untimely deaths or, or very similar deaths or, you know, they all die the same way. Again, no creativity. And that's because they believe most of humanity is, you know, dumb. That's what they believe. And they, they just feed them whatever. And they'll eventually, you know, forget about it, you know, just whatever. Don't worry about it. They, we've been programmed. Well, not all of us been programmed for a long time, you know, and eventually it'll go away. Everybody will forget about it. And that's the problem. That's the one of the underlying problems. So what I've just kind of, I don't know, picked out was, oh, well, also I'll make mention because I came across another YouTuber. Um, I don't remember her name, so I apologize because I, I never heard of her before. But I was I liked her video and I agreed with some of the things that she was saying. Um, but one of her videos, though I understand what she was doing and I agreed with that, but it wasn't correct because, um, other people as well as her were looking at that. He fell off, uh, the third balcony that was sort of in the middle, the center of the building. No, it was not because he is in a luxury suite. And those are at the end. And there's several pictures out there. Even when uh, Liam's father arrived there, he was out on the balcony kind of leaning up. You probably saw some of those videos or pictures out there. Kind of, uh, you know, he's probably doing his own assessment in his head, you know, trying to recreate or get some sense of, you know, how his son died and why. <clears throat> so, um... The video from the other YouTuber is was questioning about and when he fell and the placement of it, which still was a little off whack, you know, a little out of whack in a sense, you know, but then you just know, you never really know because if you hit something down below and the body kind of bounces off over there, but the whole point of it was one of the pictures that she had there. I can't find it, but it probably was someone sent it to her from Argentina. Um, and he was on the ground and there was the wicker chair from, there's a couple of tables down there on the ground floor. And one of those chairs was uh, up, kind of upside down on his leg. 
Well, the thing about it is that he didn't fall from that balcony that's, you know, up from there. He's way over on the other side. So there is absolutely no way he could have fell by those wicker chairs. Now, unless these pictures are very old, I don't think so because I've gone to uh, Casa Sur uh, Palermo's website and um, they haven't updated and that's, you know, the ground level, the, the furniture, the patio furniture there um, is looks the same. So unless they put wicker chairs on the other side, then it could be a possibility. I just, I, I'm not seeing that anywhere. So he fell all the way on the other side and those chairs are not anywhere near him. So unless his body was moved over to that side, then I don't know what the heck is going on over there. So that's, that's a question based on that picture, right? Because the body would have had to be moved or someone would have taken the chair <laughs> and brought it down to the other side. I don't know. The other, okay, so you see his, uh, he's in the luxury suite. Um, it's not a huge hotel. It only has 61 rooms, which is interesting. Um, again, I think I told you before, I like numbers, working with the numbers, because they, they, there's a whole mythology to that as well. Uh, I, I have not seen anybody post what his room number was. Uh, I would love to know that. I suppose you could call the hotel and ask them but I'm not going to do that um, because that would be another symbolism. Anyway, so he's in a luxury room. You can see that because you can see some of the pictures based on the TV, where the TV is and the table where a lot of the paraphernalia was on. Um, so you can see that it's the same, it's the same room. So Liam was by some, I guess someone, whoever took this picture because it's all over the internet. Uh, and it was stated that he was, you know, hanging down in the lobby with his laptop. Uh, looked like the picture that I've seen here, which is actually clear. Some of the other pictures blur it out, but to me, it looks like he's reading emails. Now, this could be where some people are saying that he was dropped by his label. I don't really know that. Has the, the label company come out and stated that? I haven't heard it, but maybe, maybe they have, but maybe they don't want to say that because then they could, you know, then that might, some people may go after them thinking that they're to blame, etc. But I haven't heard that yet, but it may be so. And that could be what, you know, set him off. You know, why, why would they be dropping him? That you got to look, ask the questions. What, what would be the reason if that's actually true? So that could be why there's a picture here in the lobby um, and he doesn't look happy in this one, but you, you never know. He could be focused on something and I don't know what it is about this man. And this is just more energy. So this would be my intuitive sense where I come in and I say, why? He's in a black suit maybe, or it looks like he's looking down. It could be on a phone. I don't really know, but there's something about him that kind of irks me. So don't know. I just don't know, but there's something about him. So then I don't know which time this is, you know, if he, how many times he went up and down. Some people say he went up and down several times. One person said it was, he just smashed the computer and then, uh, he started to convulse and they took him upstairs. Uh, I don't know. It sounds mixed up to me. Um, so in the room, this has gotten my attention. This is the TV. So I really zoomed into this uh, as well, looking at the pattern as to what object was used. To me, it would be, um, if it isn't a fist, and dang, <laughs> whose fist would it be? Because it really looks like it's very circular, you know, and it's directly into the center. So either there was an object it was very large, um, maybe uh, that was rounded at the top and they just smashed it straight into the middle. Uh, it does almost look like a fist. And if it was a fist, um, that would, and if it was Liam, that would mean that he would have, um, cuts on his hand, you know, or bruises or whatever, whichever hand. 
So, and I don't see, there's another picture, but I didn't put it here where you can see the floor. Cause then I was looking at the floor. I wanted to see if there was actually any glass from the TV on the floor, or if there was, you know, pieces or objects. And there really isn't, there's just a couple, a little bit of debris of something that doesn't look like glass and maybe some paper. So that doesn't, there's, uh, there's a question. And then you see, there's a champagne glass there that's half full. Um, interesting that it's down there. I just, I'm starting to feel that things are pl being placed. And then you go to the, um, <laughs> this picture, well, I don't know if we're in the sequence here as I'm recording this, but there's the, um, pink cocaine that the toxicology report says that his body was filled with, uh, pink cocaine, crack, and I forgot the other drug, which it has to do for, is for depression. So I apologize. I'm not very good with drugs because I don't take them, uh, prescription or otherwise. So, and the table, of course, where all this paraphernalia is on really caught my attention because I was like, I don't see any pink cocaine. Like where, where is it? Um, I just don't see it. And looking at this, now somebody said that someone in housekeeping, you know, brought him in these drugs. Uh, that That's another whole storyline that I have questions about. Um, the reason I say that it's not because people can't really get drugs and, you know, maybe someone came up to him because they knew who he was and they knew that he did drugs. And so they wanted to make some money from a rich celebrity and, you know, but the thing about it is you have to be careful also in the Latin countries, right? I don't care if you're a celebrity or whatever. Um, you really do have to be careful. And who are you hanging out with? Who are you meeting that you found someone to get you this much, these type of drugs? You know, there's got to be some contacts there. <clears throat> there's got to be some people who... I don't know what type of players they are. Um, it's possible, but it's also, you know, and as a foreigner again, and as a celebrity. And the other thing is that apparently he was in the middle of doing, getting his, um, uh, renewing his visa for the States. Well, you don't want to get in trouble or get caught with drugs because, you know, right there, it doesn't matter that you're in Argentina or, wherever, I mean, that would be a black mark on you. And right away, um, the States wouldn't let you in. So I can't see him, you know, like putting himself in this position. Um, but you never know. Right. So the table really to me looks like, and I'm not an expert, but I do know a little, and this looks like he was doing freebasing. And he didn't have all the proper, you know, the whatever, the the gadgets, the, the 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 equipment. So he was doing whatever or whoever was doing it, and it looked like they were free basing. So that's crack. And I was like, all right. So I see that. Um, all right. Okay, that's there. But the pink cocaine seemed to be the big, the bigger drug. The the bigger story here because it's a common theme as well with another celebrity, um, Diddy and some other stories where this, uh, they call it, uh, Tulsi, Tulsi, is it? Um, I don't have a lot of knowledge about that, but I have heard it. And so right there for me, that <laughs> my intuitive sense and my two senses, there's a thread happening here. All right. And he's a celebrity and he, you know, who knows what he knows, who knows what has happened to him, who knows what type of control or mind control MK, MK, MK ultra he may be under, because I'm sorry to say, but so many of them in that industry, especially in the music industry are under mind control. It's, it, that's a whole different story that I'm not going to go down there. That's a whole, that's a deep rabbit hole. 
Um, it's becoming more known and people really should do their own deep dive with that to understand it because that's how they get them to do things. That's how they control them. So that may be a factor that took place too. I feel like the drugs were given to him and then maybe injected or maybe forced upon him or done in a different way that he didn't know, right? Like there's a glass of champagne. Well, that to me, I don't know why that kind of bugs me as well because uh, there's the talk about the Diddy parties. As soon as you come in, they give you this glass of champagne, orange champagne or something like that. So you don't notice that they've already put the Tulsi uh, into the drink because it disintegrates. Even though it's pink, it just, you know, disintegrates, disappears. So I felt like that was another little symbol there <laughs> because these ones who do these things, they only hide so much. They understand on another level that they must show some of what they're doing. They believe that absolves them of karma. So they will show you certain things. Many of you have heard this before. They do things in plain sight. And then they try to screw with you later, like, you know, just put a whole different story out there. And, you know, um, so there's a thread going on here. I, I feel like it. And the other thing is that it's October. And if you go back, if you're someone who really um, you know, stays in tune or on top of a lot of these celebrity or public figures, uh, passings, you'll, you'll, again, you'll notice another thread. You'll look at the timing, but October is the month of harvest. September, October is the month. It's the harvest, the harvest moon and the full moon. We just had a super moon. Um, you know, they have to appease their whatever their gods, their whatever, you know, so, and they have to, um, show what they've done to a certain extent. So right away, I was feeling like this is, there's something else going on here. And then, then you have, this kind of came up for me later on. Um, <laughs> You can see I took, I did uh, the balcony uh, that's on this side and on that side. Oh, one thing I, I missed was that uh, because this other YouTuber actually had a picture and she pointed out too that one of his shoelaces was untied, I think. And um, I was thought that was interesting too because I was like, oh, but you're, you're all dressed up. He was all, he's in the same clothes though because it's the same pants as you see him laying in the lobby as the pants that he has on when he's on the ground. And he has the same shoes on, but you see that the lace was also hanging down, which is interesting um, in this picture here when he's in the lobby laying on the sofa. So he's got this one lace. I don't know. Maybe it was broken and he just, or he, maybe he was still, you know, out of it a little bit and he just didn't pay attention to it. So um, what that also tells me is there's not a lot of time between that in the lobby and being on the ground dead. He didn't go into his room. He didn't take his shoes off. He didn't, he's in the same clothes. Um, except for that, there was another picture that some people in Argentina, again, I didn't see it because some of these things are more explicit. Um, you can go on the dark web, but I'm not doing that and probably find them. But then they start to sponge them, you know, from the internet. Though someone had said that he had his back, a backpack or his purse or whatever it is that he had. Um, you know, he would carry his money or wallet or whatever ID in it. And he had his hat on also. <laughs> so he either was about to leave. Like, I feel like if he had his hat and his purse on, he was going to leave. Not over the balcony. And as I said in my, my previous videos, I feel like there was at least three other people involved in this. Whether they were all there at the same time, probably not. 
and there's probably someone behind the scenes. This is all inconsistent. It's all fishy. It doesn't, it doesn't flow to me. It just, it just doesn't. There's too many questions and discrepancies. And then there's this gentleman who I actually saw this literally probably about two minutes after the news came out because here in, 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 in Latin America, the news was very quick, maybe even before you guys got it in the States and elsewhere. And so I was watching the Associated Press and another um, Argentinian uh, channel on YouTube. And I saw this man here. I don't know if he's American. Um, it could be American or Canadian based on his accent. And I looked at him and I, as soon as I saw him, I said, my gosh, he looks very familiar. Who is this guy? Like somewhere, because I have visual memory. The thing is, I may not remember all the time, like, especially something like this, if I, you know, seen this guy only once or twice before, but it's just somewhere the impression is in my mind. So he looked so familiar. Now, probably most of you seen this. And then I found out his name is, what is his name? Supposedly Brett Watson, which brings up another question afterwards. So he was saying that, you know, he was in the lobby. He saw him, you know, angry, saw him look like he was convulsing or dizzy or whatever, and that he was taken up to his room. He said that he was under two, so he would have been in luxury suite as well, two floors down, but that um, his friend, Brett's friend, was across from Liam, and so that he had heard him that day making all kinds of weird sounds and things like that. And I was like, oh, so his friend was right across from him. Nobody went in there to help. Nobody thought like you saw all this happening and you just didn't do anything. Like never mind the hotel. Um, they didn't do anything. You know, I, I worked in the hospitality industry for years, hotels, restaurants, etc. And, you know, if I saw something like this, I would be up to that person right away. And especially in the hotel, I would have, you know, taken them to his room and I would have checked with him. Like they said that he wouldn't let them in, but wait a minute, you said that you brought him up there or whoever brought him up to his room. You didn't go in and, you know, say, I don't know. There's a lot of things missing here. And a lot, again, a lot of inconsistencies. So, but this guy also said that his friend who was across from Liam heard Liam fighting with his friend, like Liam's friend. Who, who, who is that? What friend? I haven't heard about any other friend that's there. Someone in some, I don't even know where it was. I heard it very quickly said, oh, his manager was there or a manager was there. Really? So he was there with somebody else or he had another friend there. Where is this person? So right away, I was like, okay, Liam was fighting with a friend. I don't know, maybe it was the drug dealer. Maybe it was the housekeeper. Maybe it was whoever was in the room with him because there was other people there. He was not by himself. That's That I feel in my bones, he was not by himself. So this guy, Brett, I'm also suspicious about because he looks familiar because I went on a big search for him to see where else he would be. And I find him absolutely nowhere on the internet. Only this picture comes up having to do with this incident. He doesn't exist anywhere else. And that could be because that's not what his name is. I found a lot of Brett Watsons, but none of them look like him. So I'm a little bit uh, suspicious about this guy because in a lot of these false flags or these events and things that take place, there's always people placed there, you know, they have their role. They're a part of it. They do what they're paid to do, or they do whatever is necessary to, you know, complete this whole orchestration. So he's suspicious to me. So it would be nice if he came out. I haven't seen anything else from him out there. Maybe there is, I don't know. And then lastly, this is funny because uh, I wouldn't have found this unless my iPad some for some reason kept crashing. 
uh, on, on, on uh, my editing. And I had to go to my other laptop because I just couldn't do it here. So when I was looking for the picture of the Brett Watson, I came across this picture. And I thought this was interesting. It was an article first. It was an Argentini, Ar Argentinian article. And it was talking about a YouTuber influencer, uh, Julian Serrano, who made a statement that a lot of Argentinians were upset about. Made a statement that he was very upset that his favorite member of One Direction died on his birthday. They are the exact same age. They were both 31. And I was like, well, that's, you know, interesting. But it can happen. Sure, why not? Somebody's birthday. Um, but then the picture that they had, uh, which is a much older picture of him because I went to look at some current ones. And they post the picture of him looking, you know, a little bit kind of arrogant in my view. He's, he's a young guy, but... And here's the tattoo on his neck of 777. And I thought, oh, here we go. Here's the symbolism. Here's more symbolism. Now, there's going to be people in, you know, in spirituality and in different uh, New Age things that look at 777 in one way, the three-digit numbers. And yes, there's a little relevance to that. But when you get into a deeper esoteric uh, understanding, which I'm not going to go into right now, but you can, you can do that at 777, there's another purpose, and he put it on his throat. Now, I went and explored him a little bit more as well, just to get a feel about him, and then I saw he's, like, full of the tattoos, um, like Liam. That might be one reason I maybe he resonated and liked him. But also, people who, you know, build their body, fill up their body with tattoos are generally, generally, yes, I know there's the art to it, but generally are, they're taking away in some way, it's very psychological, a deep pain from childhood. It's, it's like a covering up, you know, um, it, Bieber, Bieber is one. Just look at all, any of your athletes or any of your um, people that, you know, are in a public realm or even people that you may know that just cover themselves with tattoos. It's not just because they like tattoos or the art. There is a very, very deeper uh, meaning there, uh, deep pain. And um, so when I looked at him, and I think, but I'm not sure because I haven't compared, but they may both have similar or the exact same angel tattoo. Uh, it could be possible that uh, Julian, uh, you know, copied Liam if he really liked him. But there's a lot of symbolism there too. And so I thought this was interesting that this became a big story. So 777. There's a lot of symbolism here. There's a lot of questions. There's a lot of discrepancies. And the thing about it is, from my point of view, um, I mean, I can't solve this. It's not, it's not my place to solve this, but because I feel um, inclined at this time to maybe speak out a bit more about it, because I feel like there's going to be more. And the only way to stop that is once we start exposing, exposing, speaking up, telling the truth, um, and digging deeper. Do you know what I mean? Not letting it die, no pun intended, but, you know, to, to get the truth, the real truth, not the truth they want to give you or the story they want to give you, you know, so that also that these people, these souls, these beautiful souls, Liam and many others, you know, uh, you know, they didn't do this in vain. You know what I mean? This was their journey and this is what happened. And there's clues. There is clues for us. And so, you know, I just want to say, dig deeper. And let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Well, thank you for tuning in and uh, have a good night and I'll see you again soon.